I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, barely deeply stained within, sinking to rise, rise no more. <laughs> Oh, 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 but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters. Oh, he lifted me now, safe am, am I? Help me, oh love, love lifted me. Love, God, love lifted me. Yes, it did. Surely, Caesar Williams, and this is the day that the Lord has made for us. Glory to God. So let us rejoice in it this day and be glad. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what that devil has in store for us. But I thank God for right now. Right now, I am more than a conqueror because Jesus loves me. Such a blessing to be able to come where you are and to bring our service to you. My aim, my goal, my aspiration is to win the world for Jesus. Hallelujah. What I want to do is point men to the cross. I want to point you to Jesus because it's in him we live, we move, and we have our being. So no matter which way you may have tuned your apparatuses, whatever it is, uh, uh, our way, uh, whether it be by your phone, hallelujah, or whatever. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of our service. For you, we are praying today. Those of you that are down and bound, those of you that are come up beneath the load of care, those of you that the devil been beating upon and look like the more you pray for that family member, seem like the worse that family member get. Well, I come to tell you, wait on the Lord. For the Bible said, they that wait, not prancing, but they that wait, wait patiently. The Bible said, I waited patiently on the Lord. They that wait patiently on the Lord. He said, I'm going to renew your strength and I'm going to cause you to mount up on wings like an eagle. Hallelujah. You're going to run, but you won't get weary. You won't get tired. And you will not give in or give out. Hallelujah. Today we are remembering in prayer those of you that are going through. I come today to tell you if there is a way into a situation, there is a way out of that situation. Oh, I know that the enemy thinks that he is the winner. Hallelujah. And that there is no way we can win. Honey, let me tell you something. I'm on the winning team. You're on the winning team. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, he said, I'll draw all men unto me. You're on the winning team. Why? Because you're more than 
a conqueror. Let that devil know I'm more than. I'm more than what, Pastor? I'm more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Not just a conqueror, but I'm even more than that. I have a special word from the Lord today. I want to talk in just a few minutes about a four-letter word, L-O-V-E. I know that lust is four letters, but I don't want to talk about that. I'm going to talk about love, L-O-V-E. You know, I, I, I find myself, in spite of everything, I love people. I love people. And uh, maybe, maybe it's because I come out of a big family. I don't know. But I love God's people. Glory to God, whether, whether you're saved or not. I love you. And I greet you in that high and holy name of Jesus. Don't touch the dial. Hallelujah. But I want you, even if you've got to go into the kitchen uh, to get something, take that apparatus, take your phone with you. If you're viewing this service, hallelujah, on your, um, uh, your, 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 your Facebook, or let's see if you're viewing it by way of, of uh, uh, a video, whatever way you're viewing it, I want you. Don't touch it. In fact, you need to call somebody right now. Hold up, Brother Mike. You need to call them right now and tell them that this service, that this one hour with Pastor Shirley and Caesar Williams is coming your way. Wherever you are, glory to God. God have fixed it so this service can come right where you are. All of my friends in the South Africa and West Africa. Glory to God. We are praying for you today. Those of you in hospitals and institutions, I'm praying for you. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Those of you that in old folk home and, and uh, wherever you are, I send a prayer your way because you know what? God has you on his heart. He has you. On his heart, no matter what's going on right now, God says, I've got you on my heart. You're the apple of my eye. And even though you may be going through a crisis right now in your life, hallelujah, I hear the Lord saying, I'm greater than your problems. I'm greater than death. I'm greater than your sickness. I'm greater than COVID. He says, give it to me. I'll bear it, give it to me, I'll share it. If there's a need in your life, I'll take it. But you got to learn how to give it to me. He says, my shoulders are broader than yours. My eyes are sharper than yours. Hallelujah. He said, give it to me. You're talking about an extensive list today. Hallelujah. Your name could be on this list. So don't walk away, but I want you to call somebody and let them know that Mount Calvary Word of Faith Church is coming your way. I want you to go to my YouTube page. I want you to subscribe there because I tell you, there's some good stuff there for you. Listen, if you want to be blessed, I want you to go to my YouTube page and subscribe. And not only that, if you enjoy our service every single week, I want you to go to our Mount Calvary cash app, which is dollar sign MT Calvary WOFC. In fact, it's right down at the bottom of your screen. Or go to MT Calvary Word of Faith dot org. Okay. If you do it, I promise you, glory to God that God's got something real good in store for you. So follow me on Facebook, okay? Follow me on Facebook. Now, 
um, that's a that's a a song that little children sing, Brother Mike, and it's simply called "Yes, Jesus Loves Me" because I'm going to talk about love in just a few minutes. Hallelujah. I'm not going to talk about anything that's foolish. Hallelujah. I want, I want you to know that he loves you so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask, Brother Sean, will you come back? Hallelujah. But Evangeline Bullock, a dear friend of mine in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, I'm praying for you. For Roseanne Williams, we are praying for you today, for Trudy Cash, and for uh, Latoya Jenkins. Oh, yes. And do you not know that pretty much all of these names that I have are saying, Pastor Shirley, will you pray for me? Something always going wrong, that that devil just will not leave people alone. I, 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 Patrice Smith she said, Pastor Shirley, I need a financial blessing. All right, we're going to tell God about that. And then to Tawana Garner, she says, I want healing in my body. The doctor says, I've got a brain tumor. Well, we're going to tell God about that. For Kimberly Patterson and for Cecilia Brooks, and she says, healing. She said, I have this excruciating pain in my side for Rachel Mosley and Tara Mosley. Cecilia Brooks, I called that one. Hallelujah. In the loss of, of her daughter, Tara Mosley, Dolores Hammond Duncan, and her son, Conrad. We're praying for you today. Look at this. For Richard Keith Jackson. Keith, you're my little brother. And I'm praying for total deliverance. In the name of Jesus, I believe that deliverance is knocking at your door right now. We're praying for my nephew, Samuel Caesar. Some months ago, he suffered a major stroke. And the doctors didn't think he was going to make it, but he did. For Betty McCullough. And now for all of my supporters. And it is my prayer that all of you will become a partner with me. Will you do it? Uh, you can write all of your gifts off, whatever you send, your 20, your 30, your 100, whatever you send. Amen. You can write it off. You can write it off. So for all of my supporters, like Geneva Tab and Daya Iqbal and, and Sylvia Johnson, Winnie Haynes, thank you all so much. For Althea Jeter, oh, God bless you, Althea. For Bessie, uh, Timmy, Gloria Robinson, Mildred Champion. For Julia Lewis, thank you all so much for supporting us. Hallelujah. For Thorbeth Stallworth, George Hopkins. Hallelujah. The song says, for you. I am praying for you. I am praying to for you, for you. I am praying. I'm praying for you. Janice Thompson Hall, Peggy Mack, Steph Hurley, M. Davis, thank you so much. For Sylvia Adams and Jacqueline Majette, these are supporters, you all. Uh, for Terry Martin and Mary Ginyard, Fanny Tony, Clyde Smith, Verna Williams. Hallelujah. For Carolyn Hassell, Leslin Agard, Rob Smith, Gerald, or Gerald Smith. Oh, we're praying for all of you today as we believe God 
for a right now miracle. I'm going to prove to you how much the Lord loves you in my message in just a few minutes. But will you just pull to the side? Stop what you're doing. Amen. Tell the children, please be quiet. Those right now that want to talk during the prayer, ask them if they can either go to another room or to just be quiet. Let them know that the Lord is getting ready to talk in the name of Jesus. Give them to know that Satan has no power over you. The greater one is in you in the name of Jesus. All of these names, all of these problems, I place them with all of these other prayers, these prayer requests. And Sister Carolyn, I want to just stand and lay my hand on these if I can. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us in the name of Jesus. Lord, as I touch and agree with every problem, every crisis, every situation, I pray, Lord God, that you lay your hand under my hand. Every sickness, the tumors, COVID, the cancer, the diabetes, as I lay my hand, Lord, on every problem. God, I know that you're bigger. You're bigger, you're greater. You're greater than all of these sicknesses, all of these problems with the sons and daughters. For that husband, Lord, that walked away and left that woman there to raise those children by herself. For those young teenage girls, that are having babies out of wedlock. God, I lay my hand on every problem. Lord, look into every need, every crisis, every dilemma. In Jesus' name, there's so many. And then, Lord, I know that this is just a drop in the bucket, but I'm asking you, Lord God, to do of your goodwill and your pleasure. Have it right away. Touch, Lord. Every name that's on our prayer list, Lord, I just read them out. Here they are, Lord. Here they are, Lord. Somebody, Lord, in Brooklyn, New York. Somebody, Lord, all the way from Africa is saying, Will you pray for me? Somebody is saying, I need a miracle. I need a financial blessing. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Pastor, I have this smoking problem. Pray that God will take it out of my appetite. Take it out of my system. In the name of Jesus. Here they are, Lord. Here they are, Lord. Here they are, Lord. Here they are, Lord. Strongholds. Here they are, Lord. Toronto, Canada. Here they are, Lord. They're saying, I need healing. I need a healing. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus touch Lord deliver Lord you said ask of me and we're asking now by faith God I'm taking you at your word hallelujah God you said knock and the door would open you said ask and that God that we could receive you said and we shout out to you that we could find you and so Lord here we are I'm taking you Lord at your word Bless the Lord. Move, Lord. 
camped out around that bedside. So much sickness, so much sickness, Lord. So many problems look like God. Nobody can solve them, but God, you can do it. We give it to you, Lord. We give it to you, Lord. It's in our Lord God, we decree and we declare that you can turn it around. I said, God, we decree by the power and by the authority of your spoken word. We decree it by faith in Jesus' name. Satan, get out of here. Take your hands off that boy. Get your hand off that woman. Oh, in the name of Jesus, you COVID demon, I curse you. I send you back to hell. You cancer demon, I bind you, Satan. You cancerous demon, cancer in that breast. In Jesus' name, take your hand away now. Cancer in the brain, I bind you. I bind you. In Jesus' holy, precious name, the Lamb of God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, because it is so. And now, Lord, because of that, I'm taking you at your word. You said, surely and ask of me. I'm asking, I'm asking for all of these prayer requests. Now, Lord God, let deliverance, let healing reign in every home, in every body, in the name of Jesus. God will be ever mindful and ever careful to give you the glory. For the glory and the honor shall be thine. For I ask all of these petitions in the name of Jesus the Christ. That Jesus that went to Calvary, hung, bled, and died, that we could be saved, that we could be free, that we could be healed. That Jesus that walked along Emmaus Road, that same Jesus that sets free. We ask these miracles, we ask these petitions. In the name of the Lord. For that reason, I call it done. In the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. If you agree with this prayer, call somebody now. And let them know that the prayer of faith has been prayed. I believe God. I said, I believe God. I said, I believe God. Hallelujah. The Bible said, have faith in God. But verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall speak to this mountain of cancer, this mountain of doubt, this mountain of unbelief, whosoever shall speak to it, God told me to tell you, he'll give you the mountain. Come on, somebody. He said he'll give it to you. Hallelujah. And so today we speak by faith. I believe God. I want to talk to you today. In the name of the Lord. From Romans 8, 35 through 37. And just before I do. I still want you to share with us. I want you to go to my YouTube page, but I want you to subscribe. Don't just go there. Go there and subscribe. Hallelujah. This service is as good as any as you see on television. Hallelujah. Because you get the singing, the preaching, and remembering, yes, you in prayer. Hallelujah. And so, I also need you to go to our cash app, Mount Calvary Word of Faith cash app, dollar sign MT, MT Calvary WOFC or Mount Calvary Word of Faith dot org. Will you do that? Will 
you do that. I'm getting ready now to give to you the word of God that the Lord laid on my heart. I want to announce that on next Sunday in our 12, 12 o'clock service, 12 p.m., I'm going to be uh, the morning speaker or the afternoon speaker, whichever one you want to call. I'm going to be the speaker. I wish that you uh, would come to our church. We're located 3100 Sandiford Road in Raleigh, North Carolina. I have a whole lot of online members, Facebook members. You've allowed me to be your pastor online. I want to meet some of you guys. We're located 3100 Sandiford Road, Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, will you do that for me? All right, I want to see you sitting in these pews. And the thing about it is that you don't have to sit right under anybody because we are a huge church. But I want you, I want you to come and share with me. And now to the word of God. Romans 8, 35 through 37. And it reads, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted, accounted rather, as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all of these things, <laughs> we are more than conquerors. I told you that. Through him that loved us us. I want to talk to you today from the ultimate question and God's final answer. I used to hear my husband Bishop Harold Ivory Williams say years ago, he said way back in the beginning before there was a when or where or here or now, before there was a direction of up or down or length or breadth, God was. And so was love. I've heard people ask, well, where did God come from? You got to understand that uh, there was nowhere for God to come from. He was not a beginner trying to start a beginning, but he was a beginning who did not begin to be. He was the beginning, and in him the beginning began. <laughs> God is the beginning who is before the beginning was begun. He was God all by himself. A God so great that nouns cannot adequately name him. Adjectives cannot effectively describe him. The most essential characteristics of God's love. Hallelujah. The most prevalent and powerful, amen, attribute is love. The most pervasive, prevalent influences is love. And the most consistent and continual act is love. To ask the question, what's love got to do with it? Well, it's way off base. Why? Because, because the only way to really know God is to just, honey, you got to know him to love him. And at all times, God loves us with an everlasting love. Are you listening to me? I'm talking about a tender love and tough love, but still love. A challenging and comforting love, but still love. Romans 5 and 8 tells us, but God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There are three types of love, you guys. The eros love, that's man uh, to husband or wife or whatever. The agape love is God's love, all right? The filial love is the brotherly love. And God wants first place before the husband, the wife, or the children. You've got to love him more than you love even yourself. And I hear the Lord saying, I want you to love me with your whole being. In other words, love me with everything that's in you. The Bible says 
that we are to yield ourselves to prayer and to the ministry. Understand then, there is a difference in a spirit of prayer. Oh, my, my, my. And a ministry of prayer. Evangelist Carolyn Sanders, you see, you have a ministry of prayer. A spirit of prayer is when it's been given to you. But a ministry of prayer is when you have been turned over to it. It's a part of you. Prayer becomes your everyday life. Your love for prayer is a delightful love. It's disciplining. It's, it, it's unfailing. It's unceasing love. Everything that God does is in love, by love, through love, and for love. God conceived us in love, made us by love, and surrounded us with love. Yes, he commanded us to love, corrected us for the sake of love. He sustained us through love, redeemed us for love, and God has prepared for us a destiny that is his supreme love. Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s greatest book uh, was called The Strength to Love. His testimony was uh, that the greatest thing in this world is love. Please know then that love is not easy. You need to realize that selfishness is more natural in an evil world. Why? Because this world believes in an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. They believe a life or a life. Now that's called the death penalty syndrome. But you've got to understand that the only thing that that devil cannot handle is love. Love is the nemesis and the waterloo of the devil. Satan can twist the truth without love into falsehood. He can turn scriptures without love into evil speeches that comfort cruel men. The devil can take the letters of the Bible without love and spirit of Christ and distort them into the uh, enemies of God and men. Yes, 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 Satan, Satan can master anything and everything, but he cannot master love. He can bend righteousness without love into self-righteousness. He can turn worship without love into, to, to, to the narcissistic worship of oneself and one's kind. He can, he, can, he can corrupt goodness without love to a mask for self-interest. Yes, 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 that devil can turn prayer without love into a lobbying or begging for favors in the courts of the Almighty. Satan can corrupt or corrupt music Without love into a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. You better call somebody. Hallelujah. He can turn preaching without love into an over open show to please the crowd. That devil can outmatch everything but love. If you kick that devil, he can kick you back. If you run from the devil, he'll outrun you. If you try to retaliate, he can beat you at your own game. That devil is something. If you resort to violence, he's more violent than you are. But if you are filled with the love of God and just keep on loving, that devil is stomped every time. He's defeated and he remains baffled, bewildered, uh, befuddled, and disoriented. Uh, when love gets in the devil's eyes, he can't see, thank you. When love touches his hands, he can't walk. Watch this. When love is poured out on the devil's feet, he cannot stand or walk. When real love is wrapped around the devil, he cannot move. What is Calvary but the victory of love over that devil? What is the cross, y'all? Ah, oh, the victory of love over terror and death. And so today I'm glad that Jesus stayed on the cross. Love kept him there. They walked by the cross, reviling him, saying, If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Jesus said, 
It is because I am the Son of God that I'm staying on the cross. If I'd come down, then the earth would have been destroyed and the people would have perished. The universe would have gone back into chaos and the coupling pin would have dropped out of creation. If I had come down, this land would be swallowed by the raging sea. Hell would break loose and sweep the earth in ruins. Right would lose and wrong would win. If I, if I had come down, the mission would fail and the gospel would never be preached. Sinners would never be saved and faith would go out of existence. Hope unborn would die stillborn. Love will turn to pretense and deception. Jesus said, if I come down, death will never lose its sting. If I come down, the grave will never yield the victory. If I come down, hell will never be defeated. The highway to heaven will become a dead end street. Jesus said, If I don't stay on the cross, doctors will rule over light, hatred will triumph over love, evil will reign over justice, Satan will win over God, the wicked will never cease from troubling, and the weary will never be at rest. Jesus declared, love dictated, hallelujah, that I will stay on the cross because love is the only thing in the world that the devil cannot defeat. But watch this now, it has to be true love because true love, deep love, real love, Hallelujah, that's the love of God. Now know this, you all, if it is not the love of God, that devil can handle it. Sex not rooted in God becomes a convulsive evil, separated from commitment that's void and destructive. Satan will take friendship that's not rooted in love, in true love, and murder it with the sword of misunderstanding. He'll take mutual affections that's not built on love and twist them. But the devil cannot touch the love of God. Why? Because God's love is a strong love. It's a universal love. You can find it almost anywhere and everywhere. Because I heard him say, if you are sent up into the heaven, love is there. Make your bed in hell, love is there. If you take the wings of the morning and fly away to the backside of nowhere, even that love there, hallelujah, and his right hand will hold you there everywhere. You turn, you see love, it'll shine in the sun, fall in the rain, sing in the wind, run through the river. Now, do you realize what Paul meant when he said, who shall separate us from the love of God? Paul asked a profound question when he asked, who shall separate us from the love of God? This question comes near the end of a paragraph in which Paul had been talking about a love that's so profound that it's always for us even when it seems to be against us. Paul said if God is for us, hallelujah, he's just like a friend who can be your enemy for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him should not perish but have everlasting love love is the lamb of god slain from the foundation of the world what is love love is a committee meeting in heaven right now and the world is saying to the father father prepare me a body what is love love is the 
divinity, hallelujah, taking on humanity to lift humanity to divinity. What is love? Love is God walking in the garden of Eden. So I come today to tell you. I hear the Lord saying, I brought you out of the house of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And I did that because I love you. I did that because I had you on my heart. I delivered you from slavery. I formed you as a people. I fed you in the desert. I sheltered you with my hand. I sheltered you from the sun. I protected you from the enemy. Hallelujah. What kind of love is this? I hear the Lord saying, I loved you just that much when nothing else could help. Love lifted you. The songwriter said, God gave his son and the son gave his life that you might have a right to the tree of life. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying, my grace my grace is sufficient. My love is everlasting. First Corinthians 13 says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and if I don't have love, I'm becoming like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I've got faith, uh, hallelujah, uh, so that I can remove mountains. Uh, but if I ain't got no love, uh, I am nothing. Uh, I come today to tell you, uh, God told me to tell you, uh, he loves you. Uh, now let's love him back. Uh, I don't know what you're going through, uh, but turn back to God. I hear somebody saying, uh, Pastor Shirley, I've been going through. I've been in so much pain. Hallelujah. I've been up and down, up and down, up and down. My health, my health have been up and down, up and down. When I thought I was getting well, looked like that enemy came back. Hallelujah. But I hear the Lord saying, that's all right. I see you. I know what you're going through. I know what you've been through. And I see your pain. I see your pain. Hallelujah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't you give up. And don't you give me. You hold on. Even with your last breath. Hold on a little while longer. He's wiping tears away. I told you the other Sunday. Anybody that believe. I cried my last tear. Yesterday. Don't believe it. Let me tell you something. Life is filled with tears. It's filled with sweet transition. Not on earth a move can stand. But if you build your hopes on things that are eternal and let that devil know I don't care what happened, I'm going to tie a knot in the rope and I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on when mama's gone. I'm going to hold on. When I get sick, hold on. Hold on. I know it's dark. I know. I know it looks hopeless. But you hold on. Don't you give in? Hold on. The song says, My hope is built. On nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the crowd is sinking sand. It is. Hallelujah. All of the ground. It's muddy. 
Hallelujah. But when you build your hopes on Jesus, when you lose your balance and lean on Him, Hallelujah. The Bible said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man would lay down his life. For friend, Jesus did that. He did it, he did it, he did it. He gave his life for us. What makes us so special? What makes us special? Because we've made up our minds to come hell or high water, live or die, sink or swim, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health. I'm going to love you, Lord. I don't care what come or go. I'm going to love you. Hallelujah. I hear somebody with Pastor. Pastor Shirley, you don't understand. I'm in Baca. Baca is a place with so much sorrow. Just like Lodi Bar. No joy. And I hear somebody said, Pastor, I'm way down. I'm down. I can't get any lower. You have to be careful about what you say because the devil can even take you lower. But I come to tell you, look and live. My sister, live. Look to Jesus Christ and live because it's according to his word. Hallelujah. If only you just look and live. Live. My family live. Look to Jesus Christ and live. It's according to his word. Hallelujah. Tanja, I don't know where she is. But the other morning, her mother graduated out of this life and went into the presence of the Lord. But I want to tell you, it was a graduation. For us to live is Christ. And to die is gain. I'm talking to somebody right now who have lost a loved one. In order to get there, we've got to be like the man. Listen to me. There was this man, every day he would catch a bus, home from work, going home, and the bus driver would put him off there at the cemetery. And he would go through the cemetery. And somebody on the bus asked the driver, why is it that he goes through the cemetery every day? And the bus driver told him so because he has a house, a mansion on the other side of the cemetery. And I come to tell you you have to, I have to. For me to die is gain. For me to live is Christ. And for the C. Wright family today, we are praying for them. You don't get but one mama. And Mama C. Wright closed her eyes. She didn't feel the sting of death. And that's what I like about being saved. You do not feel the sting of death. She just went to sleep, just fell asleep. And so today, family, we are praying for you, for the anti-C-Right family, and there are other families of you 
I might not know you, but I know one that knows you. I've been there many times. I know what it is to stand on the banks and watch them lower family member, a member down. All of my brothers and my sisters, my mom, I don't remember my dad that much. Nieces and nephews, I've seen it too many times. I'm the last one of my mama's children, 13 children, and I'm the last one. And the only way that I can get to where Jesus is, I've got to go through that cemetery because I got a mansion on the other side. He loves us just that much. Brother Mike, will you play? Yes, Jesus loves me. Every name that I've called, Jesus loves you. Every problem, in spite of that, he loves you. A lot of times, I will say this, a lot of times when, when we are sick, laying on our bed of affliction, a lot of times the Lord knows that he can talk to you now. Because he has your attention. Many times you make God a promise and Lord, well, you know, if you just let me get up, I'll serve you till I die. Many times you don't keep your word, so the Lord says, I got your attention now. So I'm going to take you to my bosom. The Lord loves you. He loves you. He really, really does. All right, don't forget, go to my YouTube page and subscribe. Did you enjoy that word? Well, if you did, our services come your way every Sunday by way of the Mount Calvary Word of Faith Church. I'm the senior pastor, and again, I want to see all of my online members. I'm preaching next Sunday and I want to see you there 3100 Sandiford Road Raleigh North Carolina and if you would share and partner with me dollar sign MT Calvary W-O-F-C or MT Calvary word of faith dot org he loves me Remember this, John 15, 13 tells us, greater love hath no man than this. What's the this, Pastor Shirley? That a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus made this ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life. God gave us Jesus. And Jesus gave his life. It is my prayer that this service has blessed you tremendously. If so, I want to hear from you. You're 30, you're 60, you're 100. All of it. I give it to the Lord. And do you not know some kind of way? <laughs> He just keeps on making a way for me. You know why? Because I put him first. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Michael. 
Thank you, Evangelist Carolyn Sanders. And thank you, my brother and my sister, for hanging out with me today. I look to hear from you this week, this week, in Jesus' name. I got to go. Bye-bye.